Have you ever been the victim of the Likert crush? That's when you design a beautiful experiment or write a beautiful survey, all based on Likert response items. You submit it for publication, and it comes back almost instantly with responses from the reviewers questioning why you analyzed the data you, the way you did, whether you checked the linearity assumption, whether the data was actually normal. I'm Jeffrey Frank. I'm a statistician and the CEO of Stat59. Today, in this video, I'm going to walk you through three ways that you can really up your Likert response scale items and avoid the Likert crush. So to illustrate this problem, I really want to talk about one of my favorite experimental paradigms, which is the gelato experiment. I work a lot in Italy, and so I've developed a passion for Italian gelato. And I work a lot in the Piemonte, northern part of Italy, where gorgonzola cheese and anchovies are a really special food. So I imagine myself working in a gelateria and building a new ice cream that contains the gorgonzola anchovy additive. So I'd like to start full production of this ice cream strawberry ice cream with my additive. And rightly so, the owner of the gelateria is skeptical as she thinks that refitting the existing factory will be expensive. And so she asks me, the employee, to provide proof that the new additive is better. So I set up the experiment. The experiment will be a double-blind experiment where customers are given either normal strawberry ice cream, the control group, or strawberry ice cream plus the gorgonzola anchovy additive in the experimental group, and customers will be asked to rate their satisfaction. Like many people, when I'm building my survey, I'm going to use the Likert response scale. And the Likert response scale is a very simple response scale. Usually you're asked to rate your agreement with a particular statement. So in this case, the statement is, I was satisfied by, with my gelato, and customers are asked to rate it on this scale of strongly disagree, disagree, neither agree nor disagree, agree or strongly agree. So I start my experiment and I set out serving my gelato and I have my customers rated on the Likert scale. And then I collect the data. To analyze the data, the usual thing most of us will do is sort of arbitrarily assign some points to each of these blocks. So here I will assign one point to the strongly disagree block and I'll assign five points to the strongly agree and two, three, or four points in between. And then I'm going to take the average, the mean, and the standard deviation and do a t-test on this. So I find that the mean score for the control group was 4.2 points, the mean score for the additive group was 1.5, and there's an effect size of 2.7 with a p-value of 0 0.012. And being very happy with my gelato experiment, I like to get it published, so I submit it to a reputable journal, and this comes back. And the details of how this is written can be quite revealing. It is unclear how Likert data was managed. It appears averaging of ordinal data occurred. Because most Likert data is ordinal and not continuous, statistical analysis with median and quartiles is most appropriate unless the Likert data can be shown to be continuous and normally distributed. At this point, the usual thing for the experimenter or the researcher to do is to get a bad headache and a panic attack. How are we going to address this? And this is the Likert crush. Likert scales are very easy to create, very easy to administer, but analysis is extremely controversial. So here I'd like to talk about three ways of avoiding this Likert crush. And they are, don't Likert, group them up, or just describe it, then leave it. So the first option is to just don't Likert not use the Likert scale. What we can do here is replace the Likert scale with a linear numeric response scale. And you can see here the scale is actually much simpler. We assign the value of 1 to strongly disagree. We value, assign the value of 7 
to strongly agree, and in between the values are not anchored by any text. So we have 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 in between the 1 and 7. These linear numeric scales behave mathematically much, much nicer for statistical analysis. So here, we basically are just going to sum up the points. Once again, one point for strongly disagree, seven for strongly agree. And here, we are allowed to use the mean, the standard deviation, and, P and the t-test. So the mean score for the control group here is 6.5 out of 7. The mean score for the additive group is 1.4 out of 7. And there's an effect size of 5.1 with a 95% confidence interval of 4.7 to 5.5 and a p-value of 0 0.012. So we know these linear numeric scales are robust to the continuous assumption. Another option, if we want to use the Likert response scale, is to group them up. The original Likert scale is a group of linear res of Likert response items. So here, rather than just simply ask, were you satisfied with your gelato? I split it up into seven different questions. I was satisfied with the flavor of my gelato. I would purchase this flavor again. The gelato was refreshing, tasty. I enjoyed the gelato. I would recommend this gelato to my friends. And this gelato was among the best flavors I have ever tasted. So here we actually have seven questions. Now when we add these up, we actually get seven questions of five points each so we have a maximum score of 35. And because uh, we have used these groups of similar Likert response items, we know that they are actually robust to the continuous assumption. And so we can. We can take the mean, which is 31 out of 35 for the control group, 9 out of 35 for the additive group, with an effect size of 22 and a p-value of 0.012. So by simply grouping up, we find that groups of Likert response scale items are robust to the continuous assumption. A third way that we can deal with Likert data, if we really want to stick with the single question that I was satisfied with my gelato, is rather than do any fancy statistics on them, is to just simply visually present the data. And this is an excellent alternative. We've talked before in our blog about the fact that the use of p-values now is coming under a lot of scrutiny. And one of the ways we can address this is to really look, do we need a p-value and a confidence interval? And I think for the gelato experiment, it's pretty obvious simply by looking at these graphs that the the customers who received the gelato without the additive were in general pretty satisfied with their gelato, and those with the additive were in general not. So in summary, we see that rather than arguing with reviewers about how you analyze your Likert data, we have three ways to avoid the Likert crush, which are don't Likert, group them up, or describe it, then leave it. So you can see that avoiding the Likert crush is not really that difficult. It just takes some very careful, advanced planning. And as always, it really pays to think about how you will analyze your data before you design your study. If you like this video, please make sure to comment and leave us a like in the boxes down below. And if you want to keep in touch with more content as it's developed, please join our mailing list using the link in the description.